Hello everyone. Welcome to the series on dental anatomy. In the last video, we had discussed about tooth morphology. That is the parts and division of tooth, surfaces, line angles and point angles. In this video, we will continue with the topic and learn about important landmarks or features present on the tooth surface such as ridges, fossa, pitch sulcus and grooves, lobes and other elevations. Basically, these features can be grouped into two categories that is depressions and elevations. Depressions include fossa, sulcus, grooves and pits while elevations include ridges, lobes, cusp, mamelons, cingulum and tubercle. So starting with fossa, a fossa is an irregular depression or concavity on the tooth surface. It includes lingual fossa, central fossa and triangular fossa. Lingual fossa is found on the lingual surface of anterior teeth. Lingual surface of anterior teeth. For example, here in this maxillary central incisor, this large depression at the center of the lingual surface is the lingual fossa. Central fossa is found on the occlusal surface of molars and these are formed by the convergence of ridges terminating at a central pit in the bottom of the depression. For example, in this upper first molar, this depression at the center forms the central fossa. Now the triangular fossa are present on the occlusal surface of premolars and molars occlusal surface for example in this maxillary first molar we have mesial triangular fossa mesial triangular fossa present distal to the mesial marginal ridge and distal triangular fossa present mesial to the distal marginal ridge now coming to sulcus a sulcus is a long depression or valley on the surface of a tooth that is formed by the inclines of ridges and cusp. For example, if you look at lower first molar, these long depressions along the cuspal inclines are referred as sulcus. Now these inclines, they meet at an angle and forms a groove known as the developmental groove. Now one should not get confused between sulcus and grooves. Sulcus are long valley like depressions while grooves are shallow linear depressions present at the junction of the inclines of the cusp or ridges. A developmental groove is a shallow groove or line between the primary parts of the crown or root. For example, if we look at mandibular first molar, we have buccal or mesiobuccal developmental groove present between the mesiobuccal cusp and the distobuccal cusp. Then we have a distobuccal developmental groove present between the distobuccal cusp and the distal cusp. We have lingual developmental groove present between mesiolingual and distolingual cusp and we have the central developmental groove present at the center. The occlusal surface of tooth also features supplemental grooves. These are shallow, less distinct linear depression on the tooth surface that are supplemental to a developmental groove and does not mark the junction of primary parts. For example, in this lower first molar, here we have the developmental grooves and certain short tributaries can be seen arising from these developmental grooves. These are referred as the supplemental grooves. Now 
Next we have pits. Pits are small pinpoint depressions located at the junction or at the end of the developmental groove. For example, in lower first molar, we have a central pit at which different developmental grooves meet. Now moving on to elevations. A ridge is any linear elevation on the surface of a tooth and it is named according to its location. For example, we have cervical ridge, incisal ridge and marginal ridge. The cervical ridges are seen on the cervical third of the buccal surface of primary teeth. For example, here we have on primary lower first molar. The incisal ridges are found on the incisal edge of incisors as can be seen on the diagram. Marginal ridges can be found on both anterior and posterior teeth. These are rounded borders of enamel that form the mesial and distal margins of the occlusal surfaces of premolars and molars. So here we can see the marginal ridges on premolars and molars forming the mesial and distal margins. In case of anterior teeth, they form the mesial and distal margins of the lingual surface. These are named as mesial marginal ridge and distal marginal ridge. Mesial marginal ridge and distal marginal ridge. Next we have the triangular ridges. These descend from the tips of the cusp of premolars and molars to the central part of the occlusal surface. They are called triangular because the slopes of each side of the ridge resembles the side of a triangle. They are named according to the cusp to which they belong such as we have lingual triangular ridge of buccal cusp of premolar. Similarly here we have triangular ridge of mesiobuccal cusp of molar. Now these triangular ridges can be of two types, transverse ridge and oblique ridge. Transverse ridge is formed by the union of the triangular ridges crossing transversely the surface of the posterior teeth. For example, in this upper premolar, the transverse ridge is formed by the lingual triangular ridge of the buccal cusp and the buccal triangular ridge of the lingual cusp. So this is the transverse ridge. On the other hand, oblique ridge is formed by the triangular ridge of the distobuccal cusp and triangular ridge of the mesiolingual cusp and it crosses the occlusal surface in an oblique direction. The oblique ridge is commonly seen in maxillary molars. Now coming to lobes. Lobes are primary sections of formation in the development of crown. These are basically primary growth centers that represent distinct areas of enamel formation that eventually fuse together to form the crown. In other words, the crown does not develop as a single entity. It is formed by the fusion of different individual lobes. So some important points to remember here are all anterior teeth are formed by four lobes anterior teeth four lobes or premolars develop from four lobes except lower second premolar that often develops from five lobes the upper and lower first molars develop from five lobes while second and third molars usually develop from four lobes. So lobes are usually present at the developmental stage but what happens when the tooth erupts? These lobes manifest as cusp, mamelons and cingulum. Cusps refer to the elevation or mound on the crown that makes up a divisional part of the occlusal surface. These are present in canines and posterior teeth that is premolars and molars. Canines have a single cusp hence they are also known as cuspid. 
premolars have two cusps hence they are referred as bicuspid however there is an exception the lower second premolar lower second premolar it often presents with three cusps one buccal and two lingual cusps the upper and lower first molars have five cusps first molars have five cusps while the second and third molars generally have four cusps second and third molars these have four cusps next are the mamelons these are small rounded protuberances found on the incisal edges of newly erupted permanent incisor teeth as we can see in the photographs here all the incisors have mamelons they are three in number and represents the mesial labial and distal lobes however with time as the teeth are used for mastication the mamelons wear off and disappear as we can see here in upper left central incisor there is wearing off of the mamelons next we have cingulum that is seen as a mound on the cervical third of lingual surface of anterior teeth it develops from the lingual lobe and makes up the bulk of the cervical third of lingual surface for example we have upper and lower central incisors and here we can see in the cervical third this bulk is known as the cingulum finally the last elevation that we are going to discuss today is the tubercle these are small elevations found on some portions of the crown and are produced by extra formation of enamel for example here we can see the small elevation on the lingual surface of lateral incisors these are known as tubercles this prominent tubercle sometimes takes the form of a cusp and is often referred as talon cusp so that was all about tooth morphology in the two videos we had discussed extensively about parts and division of teeth surfaces line angles and point angles and different landmarks and features found on the tooth surface in the upcoming video we will continue with our series on dental anatomy till then if you found the video helpful and informative then do like the video share it with your friends and subscribe the channel for more such content